The Democratic Republic of Congo (DRC), an expansive and abundant nation situated in Central Africa, has endured a prolonged history marred by strife and uncertainty. Within this tumultuous landscape, numerous armed factions have risen, each leaving an indelible mark on the region's narrative. However, among these myriad groups, the M23 rebels have emerged as a formidable entity, catalyzing a significant upheaval in the country's eastern reaches. To grasp the origins of the M23 insurgency, one must embark on a nuanced exploration of the intricate historical, political, and socio-economic factors that have contributed to the complex phenomenon known as the Congo Crisis. Hello and welcome to my channel and thanks for watching. In this video, we'll be looking at the origins of Congo's M23 rebels. If you're new here, welcome. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications in order not to miss out on any of our videos. The DRC, endowed with vast natural resources ranging from minerals to timber, has been a magnet for exploitation and external interference throughout its tumultuous history. The legacy of colonialism, with Belgium as the former colonial master, left a profound imprint on Congo's trajectory, shaping its socio-political landscape and exacerbating underlying tensions. The post-colonial era witnessed a series of tumultuous transitions, characterized by political instability, coups, and authoritarian rule under figures like Mobutu Sissiko, whose reign of corruption and repression exacerbated grievances among various ethnic groups. Historical Context the genesis of the Congo crisis can be discerned from the colonial epoch when the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, was subjected to Belgian dominion. During this period, the relentless exploitation of Congo's abundant natural resources, notably rubber and ivory, engendered egregious levels of abuse and subjugation inflicted upon the indigenous populace. The rapacious pursuit of profit by Belgian colonial authorities exacted a heavy toll on Congolese society leaving scars that endure to this day. Following its attainment of independence in 1960, the DRC embarked on a tumultuous journey fraught with political tumult and instability. The legacy of colonialism, with its divisive policies and skewed socioeconomic structures, cast a long shadow over the Nasset nation's trajectory, sowing the seeds of discord and disunity. The abrupt transition from colonial rule to self-governance proved to be a fraught process, exacerbating existing fault lines and precipitating a series of power struggles among competing factions vying for control of the newly liberated state. The post-independence era witnessed a succession of political upheavals and crises, characterized by coups, counter-coups, and foreign intervention, which further destabilized the fragile fabric of Congolese society. The protracted leadership tenure of figures like Patrice Lumumba, Joseph Mobutu, and Lord Desire Kabila, each marked by varying degrees of authoritarianism and corruption, underscored the endemic governance challenges plaguing the nation. Moreover, the exploitation of Congo's vast mineral wealth by foreign interests, coupled with rampant corruption and mismanagement, perpetuated cycles of poverty and inequality exacerbating social tensions and fueling grievances among marginalized communities. Comparatively, the trajectory of the Congo crisis finds echoes in the experiences of other African nations grappling with the legacy of colonialism and the challenges of nation building. Countries like Manchuria, Zimbabwe, and South Africa have confronted similar obstacles in their quests for political stability and economic development, contending with issues such as ethnic strife, authoritarian rule, and external interference. However, while some nations have managed to navigate towards greater democratic governance and socioeconomic progress, others continue to grapple with protracted conflicts and governance deficits, highlighting the complex and multifaceted nature of Africa's post-colonial struggles. In essence, the roots of the Congo crisis are deeply intertwined with the historical legacy of colonial exploitation, post-independence power struggles, and external interference. Addressing the underlying structural impediments to peace and development in the DRC necessitates a multifaceted approach encompassing governance reforms, socio-economic development initiatives, and regional cooperation. Only through concerted efforts aimed at fostering inclusive governance, 
promoting equitable resource distribution, and addressing historical grievances, can the DRC hope to transcend the shadow of its tumultuous past and chart a course towards a more prosperous and peaceful future? Post-independence instability After achieving independence, the inaugural Prime Minister of Congo, Patrice Lumumba, encountered resistance from various quarters, both domestically and internationally, culminating in his assassination in 1961. The post-Lumumba era witnessed a revolving door of autocrats and military strongmen assuming power, with figures like Mobutu Sese Seko emerging as prominent figures in the country's political landscape. Mobutu's iron-fisted rule not only siphoned off Congo's abundant resources for personal enrichment, but also stifled any semblance of dissent through brutal repression and state-sponsored violence. In the ensuing decades, Congo experienced a tumultuous political trajectory characterized by a succession of dictatorial regimes and military juntas, each leaving its indelible mark on the nation's socio-political fabric. The reign of Mobutu, in particular, epitomized the nexus between authoritarian governance and systemic corruption as he presided over a kleptocratic regime that pillaged the country's wealth with impunity while relegating the populace to abject poverty. Ethnic tensions and regional rivalries Ethnic discord and territorial disputes have remained entrenched issues in the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC, rooted in historical legacies of colonialism and resource competition. The presence of the Tutsi minority primarily concentrated in the eastern provinces of North and South Kivu, has been a focal point of ethnic tensions and regional rivalries, further fueling societal divisions and exacerbating conflicts. Statistics indicate that the Tutsi population in the eastern provinces of North and South Kivu constitutes a significant minority of the total population in the region. Despite their numerical minority status, the Tutsi community has historically wielded disproportionate influence in certain spheres, exacerbating tensions with other ethnic groups and contributing to social and political frictions. Moreover, economic disparities and marginalization have compounded the grievances of the Tutsi population, with statistics revealing stark inequalities in access to resources and opportunities. According to recent studies, the Tutsi community in the eastern provinces of North and South Kivu faces higher rates of poverty and unemployment compared to the national average, reflecting systemic patterns of discrimination and exclusion. In addition to internal dynamics, external factors have also played a significant role in perpetuating ethnic tensions and regional rivalries in Congo. The involvement of neighboring countries and international actors in supporting various ethnic factions has further complicated the conflict landscape, with geopolitical interests often exacerbating existing fault lines and exacerbating instability. Rise of the M23 Rebels The inception of the M23 Rebellion in 2012 marked the apex of simmering discontent and historical grievances harbored by ethnic Tutsis residing in the eastern region of the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC. Rooted in a complex web of socio-political dynamics, the M23 insurgency represented a multifaceted response to perceived injustices and marginalization experienced by the Tutsi community over decades. A notable aspect of the M23 rebellion was the composition of its ranks, comprising primarily disaffected individuals who had once served in the Congolese armed forces. Motivated by a sense of disillusionment and frustration with what they perceived as systemic discrimination and mistreatment by the government, these former soldiers opted to defect and join the ranks of the M23 rebels. Their grievances ranged from issues of ethnic discrimination to concerns regarding inadequate representation and opportunities within the military hierarchy. At the helm of the M23 movement stood Bosco Taganda, a prominent figure with a controversial military background. As a former Congolese general, Ntaganda wielded considerable influence and commanded a loyal following within the armed forces. However, disillusioned by the prevailing state of affairs and emboldened by the prospect of challenging the status quo, Ntaganda emerged as a central figure in galvanizing support for the M23 cause. The objectives of the M23 rebels extended beyond mere expressions of dissent, 
Rather, they sought to assert their autonomy and challenge the authority of the central government in Kinshasa. By seizing control of strategic territories in the volatile Kivu region, the M23 insurgents aimed to carve out a distinct sphere of influence and establish alternative governance structures reflective of their aspirations and grievances. In addition to internal grievances, external factors played a pivotal role in shaping the trajectory of the M23 rebellion. Allegations of support from neighboring countries, including Rwanda and Uganda, added a layer of complexity to the conflict, with accusations of external interference further inflaming tensions and perpetuating the cycle of violence in the region. Foreign Support and Allegations The M23 insurgency, far from being an isolated event, emerged as a pivotal component within a complex tapestry of regional dynamics and strategic alliances. Accusations levied against Rwanda and Uganda for their alleged backing of the M23 rebels underscored the intricate interplay of geopolitical interests and power dynamics within the Great Lakes region of Africa. According to various sources, including reports from international organizations and independent observers, Rwanda and Uganda were implicated in providing substantial support to the M23 insurgents. This support encompassed a range of activities, including the provision of weapons, training, and logistical assistance, which bolstered the rebels' capacity to wage war against the Congolese government forces. Such allegations cast a shadow over the purported commitment of these neighboring states to regional peace and stability. Despite vehement denials from Rwandan and Ugandan authorities regarding their involvement in the M23 rebellion, mounting evidence suggested otherwise. Testimonies from defectors, intercepted communications, and armed seizures all pointed to the complicity of these countries in fueling the conflict in eastern Congo. Moreover, the strategic interests of Rwanda and Uganda in the region, including concerns over security and influence, provided a compelling rationale for their alleged support of the M23 rebels. The ramifications of external involvement in the M23 insurgency extended beyond the borders of the Democratic Republic of Congo, exacerbating tensions and undermining efforts to achieve lasting peace and stability in the Great Lakes region. The influx of weapons and fighters from neighboring countries not only prolonged the conflict but also fueled intercommunal violence and humanitarian crisis, resulting in widespread displacement and suffering among civilian populations. Humanitarian Impact The repercussions of the M23 insurgency reverberated far beyond the confines of the battlefield, inflicting profound suffering and hardship upon the civilian population inhabiting the conflict-ridden eastern provinces of the Democratic Republic of Congo DRC. As the rebellion gained momentum, the humanitarian toll mounted exponentially, with dire consequences for thousands of individuals caught in the crossfire of violence and insecurity. The displacement of civilians emerged as a central feature of the humanitarian fallout from the M23 rebellion, as families were forced to flee their homes in search of safety and refuge. Displacement camps swelled to capacity as streams of internally displaced persons IDPs, sought shelter from the ravages of conflict, straining already limited resources and exacerbating the precarious conditions facing vulnerable populations. According to estimates from humanitarian organizations, tens of thousands of individuals were uprooted from their communities, compounding the humanitarian crisis gripping the region. Amid the chaos and upheaval wrought by the M23 insurgency, reports of egregious human rights violations further underscored the severity of the crisis unfolding in eastern Congo. Accounts of extrajudicial killings, sexual violence, and the recruitment of child soldiers painted a grim picture of the widespread abuse and brutality inflicted upon civilian populations by various armed factions operating in the region. Women and children bore the brunt of the violence, facing untold horrors and enduring unspeakable trauma at the hands of armed combatants. The humanitarian response to the crisis in eastern Congo faced myriad challenges as humanitarian organizations grappled with the daunting task of delivering life-saving assistance in a volatile and unpredictable security environment. Access constraints, logistical hurdles, and funding shortages hampered efforts to provide essential services and support to those most in need, exacerbating the suffering and vulnerability of affected communities.
In addition to the immediate humanitarian impact of the M23 rebellion, the protracted nature of the conflict exacted a heavy toll on the long-term development prospects of the region. Disrupted livelihoods, shattered infrastructure, and fractured social cohesion hindered efforts to rebuild communities and foster sustainable recovery in the aftermath of violence. The scars of conflict ran deep, casting a long shadow over the prospects for peace and prosperity in Eastern Congo. International Response and Resolution the global community, comprising influential bodies such as the United Nations and the African Union, expressed unequivocal condemnation of the M23 insurgency and issued fervent appeals for an immediate cessation of the violence plaguing the Democratic Republic of Congo (DRC). These organizations spearheaded diplomatic initiatives aimed at fostering dialogue, facilitating negotiations, and ultimately brokering a ceasefire to quell the bloodshed ravaging the conflict-stricken nation. In response to mounting international pressure and concerted diplomatic endeavors, key stakeholders convened to deliberate on strategies to address the crisis and forge a sustainable path towards peace and stability in the region. As diplomatic efforts intensified, diplomatic envoys and mediators worked tirelessly to engage with all parties involved in the conflict, seeking common ground and avenues for constructive dialogue to resolve the underlying grievances fueling the rebellion. Amid escalating tensions and continued violence, the situation reached a critical juncture in November 2013, as a culmination of relentless combat operations and heightened diplomatic interventions led to a decisive turning point in the conflict. Bolstered by the concerted efforts of regional actors and international partners, Congolese security forces successfully quashed the M23 rebellion, dealing a significant blow to the insurgency and its nefarious agenda. In the aftermath of the military campaign, the leadership cadre of the M23 rebels found themselves cornered, with limited options available. Faced with mounting pressure and dwindling prospects for victory, Many of the rebel leaders opted to evade capture by seeking refuge in neighboring countries or fleeing into exile to evade prosecution. Others, recognizing the futility of further resistance, chose to surrender themselves to Congolese authorities, signaling the collapse of the rebellion and paving the way for a tentative semblance of peace to emerge in the war-torn region. The inception of the M23 rebels in Congo is intricately linked to the complex historical, political, and social factors that have defined the Congo crisis. While the suppression of the M23 insurgency represented a notable achievement in the pursuit of tranquility and order in Eastern Congo, the fundamental challenges of ethnic discord, political exclusion, and resource rivalry persist unaddressed. Effectively tackling these underlying grievances is imperative to avert potential conflicts and lay the foundation for enduring peace and stability in the area. There we have it. Thanks for watching. Please be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below.